is the sole financial services reporter uh, on things like hedge funds, banking, markets, which we're going to be talking with her right now, for Greenwich Time and all Hearst newspapers in the state of Connecticut. She's also got a blog, uh, although she does block her Twitter followers, don't you, Terry? I do. Sometimes it's private. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> but, there'll, there'll be a new Twitter following for the blog. Yeah, uh, and uh, she does great investigative journalism, folks. You will hear a lot more about Terry Buell as uh, uh, many of these scandals unfold. And in fact, she's covering one of them right now with Connecticut Senator Chris Dodd, who uh, basically got a little too hot in the kitchen, I guess, Terry, and he's deciding not to run. Oh, this is the God, Senate I, I banking. Uh, Senate banking chairman, and you're not even going to run? Anyway, well, he's welcome, losing. Terry. Tell yes, us a little yes, about Terry. it. Thank you so much. That, that, that was a crazy day yesterday. I mean, the first phone call, right, Go, goes to Stevie Cohen's office of SAC, Cliff Ashness of AQR, and I fall off my chair when they say, I'm not surprised. We weren't going to give him any more money. <laughs> How about that, wow. Chief? And, folks, I mean, you know who Chris Dodd is. Senate banking well, explain committee who these, chairman. Explain who these other people are. And yeah, Terry, if you could uh, a little more about uh, those hedge fund managers like Stevie Cohen of SAC Capital and so forth. One of the biggest on the street. Right. So, so Senator Dodd, 30-year mm-hmm. professional senator here, was about to run for a sixth term. He pretty much controls the Senate banking committee since he's the chairman now. So the Democrats are control. And we found it really interesting, especially in 2007, when Stevie Cohen of SAC Capital, one of the largest hedge funds out there. Basically, we call him King Stevie. Went out and gave him over, I don't know, $230,000. He actually, he was number one of hedge funds to give money to Chris Dodd, which we think is interesting, especially since Dodd's out there trying to tell everyone that, that he's going to start to regulate and 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 lob on a huge carry interest tax hike to these hedge funds and private equity farms. Yeah, that had to go over like a... Uh, Why were they giving them so much money? And this just goes to the whole, like, flip-flop Dodd angle, where, where he goes out in a populist view and tells his constituents he's, he's going to control hedge fund regulation. And then, it, it, you know, it gets to crunch time, and he writes a letter to Chris Cox at the SEC to tell him, well, maybe we should look at this. You know, what, why should we do a tax hike for hedge funds? Why should we regulate them? And nothing happens. It, it falls off. It falls off the radar. Crazy. Yeah, it is. It is kind of bizarre. But you know, you, but you also wonder. And I guess, well, Terry, I'm sure you're up on uh, the Supreme Court doing the, the three chances to overturn these these. Uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the the rules and uh, well, you're, you're stealing your own paycheck. What do they call it, Jan? It's the uh, stuff. The services. Stuff the services. And uh, thank you. Luke. It is pretty interesting. I mean, if you're a hedge fund and you give somebody, you know, two hundred fifty thousand bucks, say. What exactly does that buy you? I mean, I mean, it is a little bit odd. I mean, I mean, what do you think? I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't mean that hedge funds worldwide can do anything they feel like, and, and the guy can't, you know. I mean, it, it puts you in a pretty bad spot, well, I think, which is what you're talking about. But I mean, what do you think you actually just bought for that 250? Obviously, these guys yeah, bought. That's the question. What happened to their investment? Yeah, well, well I think I think clearly they bought a voice. Well, yeah. sure. The question is, uh, to me, I, you know, what do they buy? They buy a voice in the moment, right? But what if that voice isn't there anymore? What have they been giving money to? You know, what have they been giving quarter of a million dollars every year, and and the guy's out? Do you think they spread it around though, or they really zeroed it in on him because of his? Well, definitely no. I, I think most of their money goes to anyone chairing the banking committee. I, I think that that's the most important thing to them. Well, I think you. I mean, I don't hear in Illinois. Uh, I'm not. Is, is the banking committee? Is there? Some, you know more about this than me. Uh, is you know, well, Rostenkowski in the house? Sorry, you're going to to Dodd. Well, now in the House, Shelby. that was that uh, was a Ways and Means sort of the Banking Committee of the House, or no? No, they have their own Financial Service Committee. Okay. So, the, so that's Barney Frank, and actually one of our new congressmen, Jim Hines. Because here in so Chicago, they used to give a lot to Rasty. The Senate, right? It's got to pass the House and then eventually get to the Senate. Well, who's who's going to be the new chairman? Assuming the Democrats keep you know, control. They, they don't know. Well, they'll they're, definitely they're, keep they're control of the Senate. Though, well, I mean, I'm saying assuming they are. Who, who's the second-ranking Democrat? Uh, Schumer's on there. He is. Uh, I don't know if he's ranking he in terms of, but I don't. I don't yeah. think. I don't think that's in his agenda, actually. Well, anyway, isn't it? You have to sit down and think about that. I thought it just normally goes to the second uh, highest guy in a committee. That, that that's party. what I understand. 
Okay, well, you hope you hopefully you're right. It shouldn't just do it. But I, I, I thought if you had been there, if you're next in line, and you're sitting at his right hand at you. But what, whatever. But obviously, uh, Harry well, Reid picks I it. I think the biggest interesting the, the news here that we were getting from sources, who I'm not going to name, is that they flat out said a few weeks ago Dodd was out there and he needed at least ten million, and oh. they yawned. <laughs> so we're not giving you money anymore. Well, do you think ten we million? Don't have uh, our agenda. Do you think ten million would would eclipse the eleven point? Uh, you know, he's losing by eleven points. Do you think ten million would be enough? I don't know. Here's here's the the Senate Banking Committee uh, members, folks. Okay. Chris Dodd's the chairman. Tim Johnson, South Dakota. Jack Reed, Rhode Island. Schumer, New York. Evan Bide, uh, Indiana. I'm just reading the Democratic side because there's a bunch of Republicans. I think it's Tim Tim Johnson. Uh huh. South um, Dakota. That, that's the name I hear floating. Robert Mendez, New Jersey. Menendez, I'm sorry. Um, Daniel Akala, uh, Hawaii. Uh, Sh- Sherrod Brown, no. Ohio. Uh, John Tester, Montana. Herb Cole, Wisconsin. Mark Warner, Virginia. Jeff Merkley, That's Oregon. A a big committee. Right. Yeah, Michael John, I Bennett. I think it's Tim Johnson. I heard that actually floated, John, on CNBC uh, yesterday. i got to believe it's most likely him and, and or Schumer. And, you know, then the Republicans just obviously just fall in on, on the other side because they're not the ranking party. Right. So here's the thing. So so, so where do the hedge funds spend their money now? Well, and, and how about the, I mean, the, blue, the big issue for them is the, the carried interest thing. Right. That, uh, okay. I mean, that is that is the most ludicrous thing, Terry, that has oh, gone on. I absolutely agree. And so do they, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why they keep fighting for it so much. And so I thought it was, maybe I thought it was t- tell, tell everybody, Terry, what the carried interest uh, really involves, because, of course, hedge funds manage money, folks. They get paid for it. Um, they, get, they get a fee that they amortize over the course of a year. You hear all the time, 2 and 20 structure. Right. 2% um, is the monies that they take out, um, usually amortized on a monthly basis. You know, bang, bang, bang. Uh, they get one twelfth of the monies coming to them to run their office, to pay for various systems and all the rest of the stuff, and then they get 20% or more or less of the upside of how the account does for that individual, uh, that entity, let's say, instead right. of an individual. Now, tell us about how that carried interest plays into that, Terry. Okay, so here's where some of the confusion comes into play. The, the 20% perform, we'll just use the word performance fee that they're talking about, mm-hmm. they, they pay regular income on that, guys. Sure. And, and people get confused thinking thinking that they don't that they're paying only a 15% tax rate. That's not what's going on. What's going on here is that sometimes, and it's not really all hedge funds, a lot of times it's something called a private equity firm or anyone doing a buyout deal. And if there's an investment in it and they make a capital gain off of that, then the way free markets work is they only have to pay a 15% tax. So it's really a tax on doing the deal. It's not a tax on the income they make after they do the deal. Because let's think about it. They have to pay when they do a deal, right? They make a bunch of money, they pull it together, and then they pay back their investors. And then at the end of that, they get some money. So, so why are we why are we taxing? I mean, the thought process of taxing in the middle of doing a deal, and not necessarily the take home income. I, I find that absurd. It's like, how, how would you squash deal flow? How are they going to have any room for margins? Well, I mean, the, the other side of the argument, obviously, is is a it's a paycheck to that guy, and the money came it's from a day. The paycheck, chief. It really is. It's the there's there's you know they're they're not just doing and they're not just doing deals. They'll, they'll combine that investment portfolio with trading stocks. 